Good afternoon from Lahore, Pakistan, where I've been for the last week. I'm staying in the Goldberg area. As you can see, it's a fairly new, modern area. Uh, lots of like malls and stuff. You can see this mall, it's got like a Chinese name, Xinhua Mall. So a lot of Chinese investment in Pakistan. And across the street, we've got a Nando's. That's how you know you're in a good area when you've got a good chicken restaurant to fire into after a good workout in the hotel gym. So this is my hotel here, the Nisha Hotel. And that is my room directly on the corner right there. So I'm gonna show you guys. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay, second floor, so. I kind of got unlucky with the floors. I'm on floor number two and there are six. I think one isn't even room, so I got basically the lowest, the lowest floor. And this is my room at the Nisha Goldberg Hotel here in Lahore. I'm paying 18,000 Pakistani rupees per night for this. About 100 US dollars, which I think is pretty decent for what is a luxury hotel. And it is a luxury hotel. I mean, look at the furnishings. Look at the room. It's all very fancy. Look at the fancy Samsung TV. It's about a 50 inch Samsung TV right there. And you can tell it's one of the latest models as well. Look how thin the bezel is on it. So that's always a telltale sign of how new or how recently refurbished a hotel is. The TV, that's always something I look at. I never actually watch the TV, but it's something I look at when I'm booking a hotel and I'm looking at the photos on the websites, on Agoda or whatever, I look at how new the TV is. Because you know if there's a big old CRT TV in there, if the TV's old, everything else is old and worn out and stuff. But no, that TV is brand new. It's one of the latest models. And then, as you can see, everything else is brand new in fantastic condition. All the furnishings, very, very nice. I've got a room service menu here. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm thinking I may uh, order something local like this Lahori fried fish. It's tempting. Right, the view from the window, we're on the second floor, so not much of a view. It's just on the street outside. And the windows are very grubby from the outside. I don't know if the camera picks this up, but like all over the window, there's these like grubby marks, which is horrible. Like they, they really need to get that cleaned. Uh, but yeah, usually I have the curtains closed. Main reason being there's a Hardee's across the street and it's very tempting, very tempting for your man to I don't know, like get an idea of going over there and eating some junk food rather than the local food, rather than some Lahori fried fish, what I should be in, what I should be in, the local stuff. And also there's just no privacy. You can see down there, like the security guard can see into your room. People on the street, they can see into your room and stuff like that. So yeah, generally I have the windows, uh, the blinds closed for privacy reasons, but and you do have a view of two different sides and the corner. As you can see, you can see right up the street uh, what's going on. But yeah, uh, the windows are not that clean. So yeah, what do I think about this room? Very comfortable. I've been here for seven days so far. This is day seven. So I've had a week's worth of sleeps in this bed with this fan right next to it. Oh, so when I checked in guys, when I checked in, oh, oh, this is so nice. Oh, when I checked in, it was freezing. It was like 10 degrees C or something like that. Absolutely Baltic. And I said, uh, actually they phoned me up like about five or 10 minutes after I checked in. They phoned me up and said, is everything okay with the room? I said, the room's fantastic, but your man's freezing cold. Do you have a heater or something like that? So they brought one up, it was this tiny wee thing. And I'm like, do you have another one? Do you have like two or three of them? I need like two or three, this is a big room. Like, look how spacious it is. I need a few of them. They're like, oh, we actually have a bigger one. So they replaced it with this. It's called an electric sun heater. And it is very, very powerful. So I have that running all night while I'm sleeping. And it just keeps me nice and toasty while I'm sleeping. And yeah, it's really nice. It's really, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Getting nice and toasty uh, in winter time. And this is the bathroom here. So as you can see, it's a big old bathroom. Loads of space. So there is only a shower here, there's no bathtub, which usually I prefer. Sometimes hotels, they'll give you a bathtub with a shower over the top of it. 
and I don't like that. It's kind of annoying. You have to, you have to stand in the bath, like you can barely like move around to take a shower. Uh, so I would rather just have like no bath and a shower. But in this bathroom, they have enough to have a, enough space to have a separate bath and shower. I think. Like, look at all the space. It's just kind of wasted. Kind of wasted space. They could easily get rid of one of these sinks and stick a, a separate big nice bathtub in there. And yeah, there's two sinks, which is kind of useless for me. Although I have been making use of it. I have found a way to make use of it. But um, yeah, I think what it's supposed to be is like you bring your girlfriend or you bring your wife. You're not allowed to bring your girlfriend in Pakistan. No, no, that's not a thing. You're, hotels will not let you check in with your girlfriend in Pakistan. You've got to be married and you've got to prove that you're married. So leave your girlfriend at home, guys. This is always good advice anyway. Like when you're traveling, leave your girlfriend at home. It's always a lot more fun on your own. Uh, but yeah, like if you were here with your wife, uh, you'd both be able to get ready in the morning at the same time. You know, like she'd use that one, you'd use that one, and uh, you'd save time, you wouldn't have to wait for her or whatever. But I've still been making use of it, like I said, because you know how in India and Pakistan, it's like you eat food with your right hand and then you wash your bum with the left hand, like that. Well, there's no bidet here. Like normally, like in hotels in Dubai, they'd always give you a bidet, like on the floor, that you can like, you can actually sit down and wash your bum. But what I've been doing is like, I've been using the right sink to like brush my teeth and all that, and then the left sink to wash my bum. Because like, it's just the perfect, it's just the perfect height, just to like, you know, just to like get up there and, you know, practice good personal hygiene. Right, so I think I've showed you pretty much everything in the room. Oh, I didn't show you the mini bar. Your man always has his own mini bar. So this is the hotel's mini bar here. And then this is your man's mini bar to the side. And then same in the fridge. We've got the hotel's mini bar at the side there. And then all this, all the chocolate and all that, all the probiotics. That's your, uh, that's your man's mini bar. So when I checked in, there's no menu for the mini bar. I asked them. Is it complimentary? Which would be a kind of strange thing to ask a hotel, right? Like, is the minibar complimentary? Almost never it's complimentary. Obviously, that's how they make a lot of money, is just by people being lazy and buying way overpriced snacks from their minibar. Uh, but the last hotel that I stayed at, the last nice hotel that I stayed at in Karachi, the Avari Hotel, the minibar was complimentary. So I thought I would ask and they <laughs> they were just like basically of course it's not complimentary it's chargeable it's chargeable well i was like there's no menu so i, I thought maybe it's complimentary they were like well it's, it's chargeable so they still didn't give me a menu so i don't know how much money i'm saving by buying my own stuff i just know i am saving money by uh having my own curry curry oh if you've never tried these i, I got addicted to them in india they're lovely they're a lovely taste um yeah I think I've showed you everything in the room, right? There's uh, some nice painting and stuff, if you're into that. Don't really care about it, but a nice parrot thing and some flying fish, whatever. But uh, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll go check out their gym and pool. I've already checked them out. I've been using them on a daily basis, but I'll show you guys the gym and the pool and I'll have a workout and I'll have a swim and we'll build up an appetite. And then uh, the in-room dining, some Lahori fried fish, I think. Let's do it. So this is the gym, it's pretty small as you can see, but they've made good use of the space. Uh, it's very well equipped and all the equipment, very new, very modern, very clean. So yeah, I've been having some good workouts here every day. No cardio though, uh, as you can see, that's my footwear there. So I'm only traveling actually with my hiking shoes and those flip flops. So, you know, if I want to use those machines over there, I'm probably gonna have to do a market hunt for some Fake Nikes, which isn't such a bad idea. Anyway, workout. <sighs> okay, so the plan is, guys, your man's gonna do 100 lengths of this pill, build up a real big appetite and then hit that in-room dining. I'm gonna smash it. I'm gonna smash that in-room dining. Hello, can you send me some Lahori fried fish, please? 
Yes, and some gulab jamun. So this is what I've just ordered from the room service menu, Lahori fried fish. When you're in Lahore, Pakistan, I think you've got to eat Lahori fried fish, don't you? You've got to eat the local food when you travel. So it's saying that this is succulent fish marinated in traditional Lahori spices. So I'm wondering if it's going to be anything like this, the British. The British fish and chips that we're used to getting at the chippy back home. The batter of fish, they deep fry it, and it just tastes delicious. Is it going to be like a Pakistani version of that? They just do that, but they cover it in Pakistani spices. Is that what it's going to be? That's what I'm thinking it's going to be, but I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see what arrives. And then the other thing that I ordered is a nice hot dessert that I know what it is because I've eaten it plenty of times when I was in India. It's gulab jamun. It's this nice hot dessert. And yeah, I'm feeling like I need food to warm me up. I'm, it's winter time right here in Lahore. I've got the electric sun heater heating me up. I've got the duvet and I'm about to have this delicious desi food. They heat up the belly. Hello. Hello Jeremy. Hi. How, How are you? Are you? Do you want me to grab it? Yeah. Okay. So this is what we've got. We've got the gulab jamun and oh, it is hot, which is good. It's supposed to be served hot. If you ever order gulab jamun and they serve it to you cold, you send that right back. It's supposed to be served hot. And this is the Lahori fried fish right here. So it's nothing like a British fish and chips. It's nothing like a British battered fish. It is... Well, it's battered. This is battered, kind of pakora style. I guess it's probably like chickpea flour. They seem to, all the batter in India and Pakistan, it seems to be like chickpea flour. So I'm guessing that's what the batter is. And then it's like little chunks, uh, battered, deep fried, and then covered in the Pakistani spices, which I'm gonna taste. There's some green chutney there as well. So let's give it a try then, this Lahori fried fish. It feels nice and crunchy in my hand. It feels nice and crispy. I'm gonna give it the first bite. Hmm. Guys, it's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. It's a white fish. It's been battered and then deep fried and then covered in local spices. I'm tasting paprika. I'm tasting pepper. It's, yeah, it's not too spicy. Maybe a two or a three out of 10 on the, the hotness level and uh, it's delicious. The batter is really, really crunchy. So it's almost like you're eating pakora, pakoda, you know that stuff. That's where they deep fry vegetables. Um, I think it's the same batter. I think they, they cover that in like the chickpea flour, the garum flour. So that's what it is. So it's basically, for me, this is a Pakistani version of a British fish and chips, except there's no chips. They should serve some chips with this. I mean, fish on its own. I mean, I've got gulab jamun. But, I don't know, I need something, I need something with it. I think it should be served with chips. Some chips with some Pakistani spices would be nice. Mmm. Oh. The batter. The batter is so crunchy and then the fish is so succulent. Right, like it said in the menu, it's succulent. It's really succulent. Mmm. Oh. Look at that, just like you're eating pakora, isn't it? Just like you're eating pakora. Right, I'm gonna give it a wee dip in the, the green chutney. I think this is the mint chutney that you normally get when you're eating like Indian food, like Indian chat and stuff. Mm. Oh no. This is something different. It's very herby. This is a very herby chutney. Mm. Very light, very light and herby. Kind of balances out the spice on the fish, but like I said, it's not that it's not that spicy. I could easily eat it without without this dip. Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow. It was really nice. Six pieces they gave me. So for that entire plate, the six pieces, it was sixteen hundred Pakistani rupees plus plus. You know, the service and the tax and stuff. So I guess it was like eighteen hundred. So it's about ten US dollars. 10 US dollars for that plate. Pretty pricey, but it's room service in a luxury hotel. What do you expect? But what I would expect is I could probably find this plate of food for maybe $1 or $2 out on the street outside somewhere. So yeah, I'll actually look for that. Next time I'm hungry and I'm out in the streets, I'll be asking people, where's the Lahori fried fish? And if it's as good as this, I'll be happy. Oh, mm. Superb. Really enjoyed that. Now I'm going to really enjoy these two gulab jamuns.
And if you don't know what gulab jamuns are, well, this is what they are right here. They're these milk solids. I think they're made by boiling milk or something like that. And they're served in hot syrup, hot sugary sweet syrup. Yum, yum. Let's get these two balls in my mouth. Oh. Oh, wow. That is a sugar hit right there. That is like the sweetest thing you can imagine. And then you've got like a little bit of the dairy creaminess flavor from the from the milk solids, which is like a sponge. It's like it's like a sponge cake. That's the that's the texture of it. Oh, I'm gonna demolish the second one. Mm. Oh. So guys, that's it from me here at the Nisha Gulberg Hotel in Lahore. What do you think of the place? Do you think it's worth $100 a night? Or would you rather go for the basic option, the three-star options around this city that you can get for like $35, $40 a night? For me, when I arrived here a week ago, I wasn't in the best of health, stomach problems. I knew I was going to be spending a lot of time in my room, so it was a no-brainer for me to go for the luxury option. But uh, I'm going to stay here another week. I've extended my stay another week, and I'm actually going to go and do some stuff in Lahore, I haven't explored the place at all. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think of this place and I'll see you guys out on the streets for the next adventure.